In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at Railgun. This is a privacy-focused wallet for Ethereum, BNB, Chain, and Polygon that's built using zero-knowledge technology. My name is James Buccini, and on this channel, I create content about blockchain development and decentralized finance. If you're interested in learning more, then subscribe to the channel and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Okay, so let's start this off at the Railgun website. This is at railgun.org. Scroll down, we've got a vision statements, some contributors here. Surprised these guys aren't anonymous given the regulatory scrutiny that um, Tornado Cash, particularly, and other ZK technology startups have gone under. But let's go ahead and launch the wallet. So let's launch the web wallet. We've also got options for desktop, iOS, and Google Play. The first time you do this, you need to create a wallet. So let's go and create a wallet. I'm using a really weak password here. You should probably use something better. I'll give my wallet a name. This is just James Cheney. And that's created successfully. So I don't need a seed phrase. You'd probably want to copy that if you were going to use it for something. You've got a public keys here. And we've got our wallet address. So this 0ZK reference is our zero knowledge wallet. So that's our private wallet. And then we can also switch to the public wallet here. We're going to need to load this. So Let's start off by sending it some wrapped ether. So let's receive copy Ethereum address. I'm going to go into my MetaMask wallet. Go to assets here. I've got some wrapped ether already. So I'm going to send, say, 0.1 wrapped ETH. Confirm that transaction. And this is on the Gorelli test network here. So I need to switch the chain to Gorelli test net. And now you can see we've got a 0.1 balance of wrapped ether in our wallet. For some reason, it's not calculating the US dollar value, probably because we want to test that. Okay, so now what we need to do is shield those funds. We need to basically transfer these from our public wallet to our private wallet. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to do the max amount of WEF. Uh, we need to approve that transaction first. And we also need to send some EFOs to pay the transaction fees. Let's do that now. Let's copy that. Let's send in some Gorelli ETH, which is testnet ETH. None of these funds actually have any real value. We're just using it on a testnet at the moment. Refresh that balance. You see we've got some EFO and some wrapped EFO now. So we can now go ahead and shield the wrapped EFO. Let's put that to max. That's been approved. We're just waiting for that to be confirmed. And then we can confirm the amount, click next, and go ahead and shield that transaction. Sorry, shield those funds. So we're basically moving them from our 0x uh, public wallet, which is just a standard Ethereum address, and then to our 0zk wallet, which is the private transaction. Notice we're paying a fee here as well. Now, if we switch to the private wallet, refresh the balance, and we see those funds have arrived here. So we've got basically just under 0 0.01 funds. We're getting some RPC errors. That's fine. But now these funds are in our private wallet, we can actually kind of move them around, swap them for other funds, send them different places, and do whatever we want. And there's no kind of, no one can trace that to an individual wallet address. These funds are held within a smart contract and we are, are like allocated rights to them, but we're not kind of, no one can find out who's moving what assets. They're kind of obfuscated in that way by bringing all the assets together into a single smart contract. So let's go ahead and swap some funds. Let's. Put this to WEF, a max amount, and I'm going to swap them to, say, USDC. So let's try sending 0.09. We get $7,500 worth of USDC. Note that the prices aren't uh, accurate because we are on testnet. And whenever we're doing a transaction here, we first need to generate a proof. So this is kind of proving that we have the rights over those funds. This is a zero knowledge uh, proof or a zero knowledge snark. And then we've got a proof valid for 284 seconds. So then send this to a relayer, paying the relayer fee here, which is almost next to nothing. And that transaction has been sent. Refresh, and you can see we've got the USDC in our wallet. So we've got $7,500 worth of USDC. Let's say we want to take that out to a different address. 
The first thing we probably want to do is set up a different wallet. So we'd want to go into the wallet settings, wallets, add another wallet, and call this one And his C address, but notice we've got different um, Ethereum address and different private address as well. So actually, we're, we're going to want to copy that ZK address. So this shielded address, we're going to copy. Then we're going to go into the wallet. Okay, here we go. We're going to go into the, J the original wallet and we're going to send those funds to the wallet we just set up. Let's send the max amount, confirm amount. Generate a proof. And that transaction has been sent. Now, if we switch to the wallet we just sent the funds to, and we can unshield them to our wallet address. So let's unshield the max amount. I think it's quite interesting that you can actually pay the fees in the token that you're using. They're basically, it says finding a relay that accepts USDC. So that means that we don't have to have ETH for every transaction when we're doing this. We can that kind of, the relayer will accept the token that we're transacting in, as long as we're not using something obscure. Looks a little bit like they don't, there aren't any relays on the Gorelli testnet except USDC, so we might have to move some WEF in as well. I'm going to pay, it automatically selects WEF as the fee to pay with. Proof generated. They should be unshielded now. So we go to the public wallet. We've got some funds. Can we send these out? Let's see if we can send them back to our MetaMask address. We might need to get some WEF for this. Yes, yeah, so let's, let's unshield the WEF as well. Let's try 0.9, confirm amount. Let's unshield it to ETH so we can actually play a transaction fee. That should have gone through. So let's go to our public wallet. We've got, should have a little bit of ether in there. Yeah, I've got a little bit of ether. I hope that'd be enough to send the USDC out. So let's copy our MetaMask address now. We're going to send this USDC success, send transaction. So let's have a look at what this looks like in a block explorer to show you what's going on, what the point of all this is. Type in my MetaMask wallet address. Go to ERC20 tokens. You can see we sent in um, 0.1 WEF from this address. And then from this address, we actually got out the USDC. Now this could have gone to a completely different address, which is where this is obfuscated. We've actually changed the tokens. We could change the amount. We could send half to one address, half to another, and make this as complicated as you want. But the point is there's no link between the address that we sent it to and this address that it's coming out of. This is a new ERC20 address. And all that kind of that, that gap in between that we'd done with the zero knowledge uh, wallet on Railgun was completely obfuscating how those tokens were moved about because it's going into a pool where there's lots of different tokens and there's no way of seeing kind of who owns what. So essentially, we've been able to carry out this transaction, swap in wrapped Ethereum to USDC in complete privacy. And although we did kind of send it back to the same wallet in this occasion, we could send that to a totally new wallet. And that's kind of removed all trace of where those funds came from. And you kind of you get this ability with this platform to kind of have that private, those private transactions. Now, this technology has been used in the past to kind of launder funds from DeFi hacks, and we saw a tornado cash to fall out that caused. But there are some really important use cases to how kind of privacy enabling technology can be used on chain. We'll go for them now. 
So imagine a political voting system. This could be a DAO today, or in the future, it could be some kind of digital government voting system. Now, you don't particularly want everybody to see everybody else's votes. To create kind of a fair election, you need some privacy. You need to be able to prove that this person voted for this party, but you don't want us to be able to kind of identify who that person was so they can vote without kind of fear of condemnation. Another example might be a payroll system where you want to send out funds from a central kind of treasury, but you don't want everyone to see what everyone else is getting. If, it kind of, if you're the lowest paid employer, that can create bad feeling within the organization. There's a whole bunch of use cases like this, and because blockchains are open and transparent in nature, we need that extra layer of zero knowledge technology built on top of them to enable these kind of privacy focused applications. I hope this video has been of interest. If you're interested in learning more about blockchain development and decentralized finance, then subscribe to the channel. Please hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, and thank you for watching.